Hi guys, Jane McClelland here and it's about time I posted my response to Liz O'Riordan's review of my book last week. Now my book, if you don't know it, is How to Starve Cancer. It is an international bestseller, it's been translated into 12 different languages um, and I was just astounded. Uh, initially very cross with how she portrayed my book, she got everything wrong. From the diet I uh, promote to the diet I use to the um, modalities that uh, I, I suggest. And it was extraordinary. Um, so anybody who's read my book will actually understand why I was so cross. Because there was too many um, suggestions that the ketogenic diet was the thing that I focus on. Yeah, the ketogenic can be particularly useful if you have very high insulin levels, if you're pre-diabetic. Um, it can be incredibly useful. But the problem with it is that it focuses on fat. And the whole point of my approach is that it teaches you that every single treatment modality, including the ketogenic diet, will have different pathways that will be switched on depending on what treatment you use. Uh, and the ketogenic is no different. In fact, actually, if you use the ketogenic diet, which is about 70, sometimes up to as much as 90% fat, it'll rewire the cancer to use other things, such as the SCD1 pathway, the, um, the fatty acid oxidation pathway, and it'll upregulate something called the CD36, which is a fat transporter. These will all promote progression of cancer. So... Yeah, sure. Try the ketogenic diet. If you want, but you've got to know the risks. You've got to know exactly what it's likely to do um, if you do that. And um, there are other modalities which actually I prefer or I certainly um, think are better if you have certain cancers. Breast cancer, for example, I think the fasting mimicking diet and intermittent fasting is much more appropriate because it's fat driven. Um, and in fact, actually, a low fat diet has been shown to be very beneficial for reducing metastases in breast cancer. So, yeah, I'm not a, you know, one diet fits all girl at all. Um, I'm very much into sort of looking at the metabolic fingerprint of your particular cancer, working out exactly where on my metro map, which is like a triangle which goes through the different feeding routes, the key feeding routes that cancer uses for the different macros in the diet. So glucose is one, amino acids is another, so cysteine, glutamine, um, those are very key amino acids that the cancer will use. Um, and then the fat pathways as well. So the ones I've just mentioned, including the um, mevalonate pathway as well, and fatty acid synthesis, which is really upregulated in breast cancer. These are all things you need to understand. If you want to understand how to shut down your cancer and stop it growing, you have to work out which of the pathways are more upregulated for you. And every cancer is different. So um, I'm different to every other person out there who gives a standard protocol for everyone and says, this is a cancer starving diet and this is the protocol. Mm. It's very different. Um, I actually, my, my job, I feel, is to educate people into the cancer metabolism. It's very complicated. There's quite a few things going on, but you can learn it. And this is something I have written about in my book and I teach in my online course. So I guide you through what pathways are most likely to be upregulated, the ones that are really driving your cancer. So you can work out how to switch those off. And I am getting thousands of people responding to this and doing incredibly well. And many of them will actually even go into remission. So um, that's not my end goal. It's, it was purely to switch off the growth pathways in cancer uh, and to help you live with it and actually deal with it and maybe get to the point where you can stop it growing. Um, getting into remission is clearly a massive bonus. And that's what happened with me when I had stage four cancer. Uh, it then progressed onwards from that to become um, myelodysplasia, which was treatment related. So that was related to the chemo and the radiotherapy I had. This is something she doesn't mention either. Um, so it didn't stop in 99. Um, but anyway, I, I, I didn't even know who Liz O'Riordan was. So I've done a bit of research on her. Um, and actually, I feel really sorry for her because she's 
in the same situation that I was in in 1996. I was diagnosed first in 94 with cervical um, cancer. It spread to my lymph nodes. And then my mum was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer and in 96. And uh, there was nothing the medical profession could do. She's in exactly the same situation where she had breast cancer spread to her lymph nodes. And now her mum has got osteosarcoma, which I think has spread to her lungs. I'm, I can't be sure about that, but I think it's spread to her lungs. So she's stage four as well, if so. So um, identical situation. And you know the medical profession cannot save you at stage four. And she's distraught about it. I can understand. Her mum's clearly been in a lot of pain. Um, and it must be terrible for her to witness all this. So I'm really sorry, Liz. I'm sorry you're going through that. I know exactly just how deeply upsetting the whole situation is. Uh, so I will extend an invite to you to come and learn about ferroptosis because ferroptosis is one of the potential treatments that might work for sarcoma once um, apoptosis and the normal treatments have um, stopped working because uh, that's what happens. The cancer becomes resistant to apoptosis, but sarcoma is one of the cancers that will respond really well potentially respond really well to ferroptosis. Ferroptosis, if you've never heard of it, I have got it. It actually is in my book, Liz. So please have another look. The last chapter is all about ferroptosis. And I discuss Professor Ahmed al Sakar in there. I'm trying to get him to come over to the UK right now. He's trying to sort out his visa. And I intend to run an event with him, hopefully by the end of the year, but maybe early next year. Uh, so I will keep you posted on that. So sign up to my blogs. I have a link on my link tree on my profile. Sign up to my Facebook, follow me, and we will try and get this sorted. So Liz, you're very welcome to come and join in the discussion and any doctors, nurses, pharmacists who want to come and learn about this too, because we really need to have some other options for treatment in the UK for these rare diseases that are really tricky. Uh, and it works for pancreatic cancer um, and in fact Ahmed al Saka won a, an award back in May at the Metabolic Health Summit for his work and he saved uh, a girl with sarcoma in her, her leg. Um, he didn't uh, use any, there was no surgery needed. He managed to completely reverse and get this girl back into remission without the need to amputate her leg. So that's that was using ferroptosis. Um, so Look into it, please. I have actually posted a link about osteosarcoma and proptosis on my profile as well. So, Liz, please go and have a look at that. Um, anyway, that's all I will say at this point. I will address some of the issues, such as lack of evidence, and uh, we'll discuss that another time.